lift you up as your yes, word says. When you Jesus. are lifted up, you draw all men to you. We give you the honor and the glory because it belongs to you this morning, Lord God. We bless you. We adore you. Those of you that are joining us via YouTube and Facebook, we say good morning to you. We are just giving the Lord glory and honor as we're calling this service to order. We're calling it in the order of praise on this morning. So would you join us where you are, opening up your mouth, clapping your hands, and just giving the God glory and honor? Come on, give it to him. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory and honor. With a smile and with thanksgiving and appreciation, we give it to him whether you're in your room, in your car, your workplace. Come on, just set the atmosphere even the more for God to respond in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Yes, we do. Come on, tell him something as you clap. Come on, let him hear your heart this morning as the people of God celebrate our God. Woo, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Blessings be to God. Come on. Honor Hallelujah. Honor Hallelujah. belongs to God. Yeah. Praise Hallelujah. We celebrate our God. We celebrate him being God and God alone. We recognize it as only because of him. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have this opportunity if it hadn't been for him. And so on this Sunday morning, ooh, oh God, hallelujah, with renewed mercies, we under, we bless him and we honor him. Come on, once again, clap your hands all ye people hallelujah glory to god hallelujah and with a smile on your face would you say thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah now with a smile on your face would you say hello to a few people Good as morning. we want to greet you on this morning in the name of jesus come on say hello if you're comfortable with a fist bump or a hug or just greet someone and say good morning it's so good to see you we celebrate life and we are thankful on this morning for god being god hallelujah we're thankful for his goodness and his mercy hallelujah we're so thankful that you have chosen to join us in Hallelujah. worship and in praise on today in this service. Hallelujah. Welcome to Life Changers Church of God in Christ. On behalf of our pastors, Drs. Gerald and Judy Mandrell, we're so glad to see each of you on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Name, Psalm 150 says that everything that hath breath praise the Lord, and we're here to praise him and glorify him. He is worthy of all praise and all honor. Doesn't it just feel good? Hallelujah. To celebrate life, to celebrate God, and celebrate each other. As we say thanks be unto God on this morning. As we're going to go before God specifically, even for this service, we know that intercessory prayer has gone forth. And as we go into our invocation, we want those of you that have joined and are here to just put something and someone on your mind as we are believing for God to answer prayer. We're believing that God can manifest and do something exponentially great in this place as we're expecting an unusual encounter with him. Father, we thank you and bless you on this morning. We thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love, your joy, your peace, and for life that you've given unto us today. It is our prayer that on this and in this service that you will be glorified and magnified as we submit it to you, Father. As we invite you even in the more into our hearts, into our spirits, into our lives today and into this service. As we, Lord God, made it conducive for your response. For your word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And when we praise you, you, in, you inhabit, you respond. And so we're expecting a great inhabitation of you in this place today, Father. We're expecting miracle signs and wonders. We're expecting salvation, Lord God, for people to give their lives to you, to recommit to you. We're expecting healing healing in the name of Jesus. We're expecting um, uh, just a great breakthrough, Father, in the hearts and minds of everyone present. You know the needs. God, you know when you hear the heart of your people. We're asking God that you would meet every need today through this service as we bless you and believe you for it, Father, as your word comes forth to empower us even the more and to direct us. It is our prayer, Lord God, that no one would leave here the same. In Jesus' name, we cover and bless our pastors, Drs. Gerald and Judy, this morning. We pray, God, continue strength and life more abundantly for them. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that has been prepared for us. We thank you, God, for what you have prepared for us, even in this service, because you know all, and we're trusting 
praying and believing is all our cares are cast upon you that you would have your way in the name of Jesus. There is nothing too hard for you, Father. And we thank you that this will be a supernatural Sunday of your presence, God. A supernatural filling of the Holy Ghost, Lord God. A supernatural manifestation, Father, of you in this place as we're expecting more. We've seen your power and we've seen your work. But we desire even more, Lord God, because we know you have more to do and we have more to do in you. So we surrender ourselves as living sacrifices of praise. It is our reasonable service. Oh, yes, it is. What an honor and a pleasure it is to honor you and bless you on this morning because of who you are. God and God alone. King of kings, great I am. God of our joy, God of our peace, God of life and that more abundantly. We thank you. We bless you and we expect you. We agree, Lord God, with the desires, God, of those that are joining God here in the sanctuary and on Facebook and YouTube, that God do it, do exceeding abundantly above what they're asking or thinking in and through this service today. In the name of Jesus, for your word says, but two or three will come and agree in your name. You would not only be with in our midst, but it also says that you, God, would answer. We could have what we ask for, and we're asking by faith, God, for you, God, to do what only you can do in the name of Jesus. We thank you and bless you for victory, for you are God, and we honor the opportunity we have in this service. Let no one leave the same. Let no one leave the same. Transformation change, God, forgiveness, Lord God, strength, joy, peace, fulfillment, even the more in your presence on today, we pray and we believe. In the name of Jesus, God, they're desiring, Lord God, to see, God, a difference, Father, and we're praying now, Lord God, the transformation would already begin to happen, Father, inwardly and outwardly, oh God, in homes, relationships, oh God, in circumstances. We are thankful, Lord God, that this service, Lord God, will bring forth a change for the better in the name of Jesus. God, the report, so oh God, will be greater in you. We are thankful, Lord God, for the abundance of victory and favor and blessings, healing, deliverance, and salvation in this place today. We thank you and we bless you for it. Come on, clap your hands and say, I believe it, it is so. Come on, say it again, I believe it, it is so. Come on, one more time, say it, I believe it, it is so. Hallelujah, God is our everything. And we honor him and bless him as we give him our everything. The song says, God is my everything. He's my joy and sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. He is my everything. So we bless him for being all in all on today. Bless the name of Jesus. Come on, would you clap your hands as we celebrate our God?
promotion. Come on. You got joy healing. You got joy healing. I feel good. You got joy healing. You got joy healing. You got it. You got it. You got it.
And while you're clapping those hands, shout, I've got it. my last time standing. Clap those hands, feet. While you're clapping your hands, just shout, I know it. That's all. Just three words. Oh, I know it. God said it. And now I know it. God said it. And now I know it. God said I'm healed. Now I know I'm healed. God says I'm promoted. I know I'm promoted. His word can't lie. Oh, his word cannot lie.
his presence being in this house. Come on, this last time, go ahead and clap your hands all over this building and bless him for his presence being in here. We honor and we praise him. Amen, for the Lord has been good to us. The Lord is good to us. And we thank God for his presence being in this house today. Amen. Can you all stand and give our pastor, amen, uh, give God a praise for our very own pastor, Superintendent Gerald Mandrell, and co-pastor Judy Mandrell. Amen. We bless God for them being in the house. Come on, let's bless God for those that are in the sanctuaries worshiping with us today. Come on, let's give God praise for each other being in the house, being alive, being here. We thank God for our YouTube and FaceTube audience joining in on this praise. We honor God for our praise team, amen, and our musician ushering us into the presence of the Lord this morning. We honor him, and amen, and we thank God for our auxiliary, amen, tambourine choir over here in the corner, amen. Come on, let's give God praise for them, amen, in this place. Amen. Blessing us and continuing to take us higher in the Lord. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. One more time. Amen. The Lord has been good to us. His mercy and his grace has kept us all week long and have allowed us to arrive here. Amen. To bless him, to honor him, and to thank him, to be encouraged, to go back out for this next weekend. We are grateful that you all are here on our Sunday morning service here at 11 a.m., Amen. This is what we do. This is who we are. Amen. And I'm so grateful to be a part of this ministry. Is there anybody else grateful to be a life changer? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else grateful to be a life changer? Yeah. That's it. We are grateful to be life changers. Amen. And we are honored that the Lord has blessed us, has blessed us with some awesome leaders and blessed us with an awesome life changers family. And if you all want to be a part of what the Lord is doing here, we invite you all not only to this service here on Sunday, but we invite you all on Tuesdays. Amen. As well. Amen. So we thank God for our Tuesday evening Bible study. Amen. This upcoming Tuesday, we'll have Elder Allen. Amen. Speaking. Amen or teaching on that Tuesday. Amen. Our prayer point starting at 7 with yours truly. We thank God for our Bible study and what the Lord is doing there. We also invite you on Tuesday mornings with co-pastor Judy Mandrell. Amen. At 11.30 a.m. Stretch leadership with her guest evangelist Danette McBride, the deputy director of infrastructure support services. Women successfully leading in a male-dominated field. We thank God for all of the trailblazers, amen, all the women trailblazers who are blazing a trail for those to come after them, and we know that Evangelist Met Bride is one dynamic trailblazer, y'all, not only in ministry, amen, but in the community as well, and in her field of study, her career field, and we thank God, amen, for that. We know it's going to be an awesome time, y'all. Tune in there, amen, on the Real Talk with Judy show, live show there, hallelujah, 95.3, the Lord is truly going to bless Less. And then we want to invite you all on Wednesday mornings at 6 a.m. From 6 a.m. to 6.30, we have our um, midweek, amen, intercessory prayer for 30 minutes on that same Zoom link, y'all. You don't want to miss it. The Lord is hearing us, amen. The Lord is answering us. The Lord is visiting us there, amen. And we thank God for that time of prayer. Our Life Changers Collegiate and Young Adults Bible Study on April. April 18th, amen, at 7 p.m., y'all. Come on, let's give it up for our collegiate and young adults ministry. Amen. We know that the Lord is going to do some awesome things there. It's going to be at 7 p.m. on the first and third Thursdays, amen, of each month. And we thank God for Evangelist Bride and the collegiates that are here, the Life Changers Collegiates that are, amen, spearheading this and leading this and making sure that it comes to fruition. And we thank God for all the lives that are going to be changed by this Life Changers Collegiate and Young Adult, amen, ministry and Bible study. Amen. Kingdom Builders District Women. Amen.
come to that one at the Arena. Kingdom Builders District Women's Meet and Greet on Saturday, April 27th from 4 to 7 p.m. Come on, let's put our hands together for our District Women, amen, department. It's going to be here at Life Changers. If you haven't registered, please RSVP with Sister Kalia Ball or Evangelist Carolyn Waddell. Amen. Once again, it's going to be on April 27th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. If you need to RSVP, please see Sister Ball or Evangelist Waddell for that RSVP. And then we have our citywide prayer, amen, on Monday, May 6th. Come on, y'all. We had an awesome time on this past Monday. Amen. The Lord has truly blessed us, but we want to invite you all to New Birth Tabernacle of Praise, amen, on Harlem Street. That is Pastor Rudy, Rudy Ferguson, amen, and our main focus is mental health, emotional, physical, and mental well-being, y'all. So even now, lead up to that time, amen, get that prayer focus on your mind, and when you out through your personal time of prayer, lift up the citywide prayer movement, amen, lift up those pastors who are leading, lift up Pastor Ferguson and that church that we will be attending. That's how you intercede and how you prepare for prayer. So when we get in prayer, God, it will fill that place and fill us, amen, and answer us during that time. Amen. Save the date for our Alzheimer's Awareness and Education One Day Conference hosted by missionary John Louis, Priscilla John Louis, and Sister Kaylin John Louis on June 22nd, y'all. We want to make sure that we are here to support them. Amen. Doing this one day conference, y'all. So, amen. As more information come out, we give it to you all. We want to show up in grand numbers to support mother and daughter John Louis. Amen. We also want to wish Sister Sister Tiana Thomas, a happy birthday. Her birthday was last week on April 9th. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You know we're going to sing the birthday song. Amen. For you. Come on, Evangeline Bride. Amen. We're going to sing this birthday song. Come on and stand up. We want to bless y'all. Come on. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Hi. Happy birthday to you. I want to um, announce that our Life Changers Health Ministry uh, is April Stress Awareness Month. Amen. We thank God for that tidbit. I know Evangelist Amen. George, I believe, has some flyers that she'll pass out. Amen. At the end of service, just some flyers about stress so that you can take home, you can read, you can keep it with you in your car, take it on your job, or your job script, wherever you get stressed out at, take that flyer with you so that you can read it. Amen. Whenever you meet with somebody in a meeting and you know you're going to get stressed out, take that flyer with you and just sit it right there on the table in your folder so they can't see it, but you can look down every now and then and read it and remind you how to woosah. Amen. You go, Usa. <laughs> in the midst of that, amen, stressful situation. Amen. But also on today, immediately following service, y'all, immediately following service, we're going to have our Life Changers Healthy Hearts Recognition Ceremony with Dr. Ralston and team, y'all. It's going to be right here in the sanctuary, so please don't leave. Those of you who all participated, amen, and those who did not participate, we want you all to still stay and celebrate those who participated and celebrate the ministry and the rebirth and the revitalization, amen, of our health ministry here, amen. And we thank Dr. Ralston. We appreciate you, Dr. Ralston. I know we'll say it in our second service, but we want to say it here live on YouTube, Facebook. We want the world to know that we appreciate you and your team, amen, helping to jumpstart, helping to re um, vigor, revitalize our health ministry here at Life Changes. I know it was a goal of pastors, amen, and it was a goal set and it was a goal achieved, and now it's here in fruition. We know that it's all a part of you and life changes as a whole. And our leaders leading us to start this. So today, 
immediately following service, y'all, please plan to attend. If you participated, amen, you're going to get your, get recognized, get your certificate, look at Deacon Ball, and you're going to get an envelope, Deacon Ball. We got you. We know, <laughs> we got you, Deacon Ball, in the back. Amen, but please, amen, stay, help celebrate, amen, life changers, because not only will you all as individuals be recognized, but Life Changers Church will be recognized, because we officially are part of the Healthy Hearts, amen, ministry. It's, it's a lot of ministries, amen, in this county and surrounding counties that are part of this, and Life Changers has joined that list, and I'm so grateful for that, amen. We thank God today. We honor him, and we bless him at this time, amen. We got, we got visitors, amen. We thank God. This is just, amen. I say, Sister Ross, you at church now, amen. Mother Austin, <laughs> we thank God for you, amen, and, and your guests being here. Come on, Life Changers, love on them. Amen. We honor them, amen, in this place today, amen, for being here as we celebrate. And we thank God for all of you all being here. Sister Vicky coming over from Panama City, we thank God for you as well, amen. We thank God for you all being here, amen, in this place. So at this time, I'm going to call Evangelist Matt Mandrell up for extra our offering, amen, at this time. Amen. God bless you, son. What an awesome service we're having in the Lord. Can you just, once again, just put your hands together? And give the Lord a hand of praise. We are thankful unto the Lord. I tell you, God is so good to us, and we magnify him. We do honor God for Superintendent um, Allen, who's back. Uh, some of y'all don't really know, but we have our general assembly. I saw you all over everywhere. Amen. But we want to thank God for you, sir, being back in the city and being here with us. So we give God praise for God pray for you. He and his wife are good supporters of Life Changers and talk with Pastor Stevenson, uh, Damian. And uh, he's so excited and uh, he'll, he'll be, he, he'll be, he's, he will be here soon. And we thank God so very much for you, Superintendent Adam, Allen, for what you do for Life Changers and Pastor and I up in the National Church. Thank you so, so, so very kindly. We are excited about the Lord, and I wanted to say this. Sister Ty, I heard something, and it touched my heart to uh, the core. I was told that during the play, you took off from work uh, because you wanted to make sure that your part was not missing and that you did a great job. And your mama didn't tell me. Somebody else told me. That when you started looking like, Mama, what? she didn't tell me. But I want you to know from Pastor and I, we thank God for that kind of commitment from a teenager. Can we just stand and let's thank God for, oh, come on. If y'all ever pastor, y'all understand this stuff. My God, she's a teenager. And Sister Ty, we want to say thank you so very much um, for, for that type of sacrifice. Thank you so very much. It doesn't go unnoticed. Nothing goes unnoticed. We are thankful for everything that you all do uh, to help this ministry move and grow. Uh, Sister uh, Victoria, you and Bailey, driving from Panama City just about every Sunday, does not go unnoticed. Brother Eddie, you back, and you're in Weewa, driving, driving from Weewa every Sunday morning. That says a whole lot when people make that type of effort to be here. That, that, thank you, Sister uh, then just right there, still clapping, because that make a big, that make a whole lot. And it is fuel to keep going. It is fuel to keep going. I'm going to tell all of you who live right here, we thank God for you as well. We thank God for you as well and all of the sacrifices that everybody made to be here. I want to thank you all for Tuesday night. Life Changers, you were here, and we thank you. We have one more time in the Lord. My God. <laughs> We have one more time, and we know that some of you sacrificed to be here, and we want to say thank you. Thank you. This is our church. This is Life Changers Church. Amen? This is our church, and we want to build it. I said if pastor has nobody else to say amen, his wife should. Amen? And so, Life Changers, we look to you, and we want you to mark your calendar for May 14th, because we're going to have one more. We got some good churches coming up in here. May 14, Pastor Fu, we got Pastor Joe Davis coming, Pastor Bishop Lamar Simmons uh, coming. We got a whole bunch of folks coming, and we are excited. Amen? And they perked there, almost packed this church out uh, with Destiny Church. So y'all be here. They brought everybody. They brought everybody. And so we are thankful what God is doing. 
we got we are going into 30 years 30 years of service 30 years of service that's it that's it come on 30 years of service 30 years of service that's right 30 years of service if ain't nobody standing aboard of direct that should be standing <laughs> Amen. 30, 30 years of service. 30 years of service. And God has blessed us, and we're looking for some new things. We're expecting God to do some new things. And those of you who are participating in the Big Guild Sunday, thank you all so very much. Thank you. We want to thank you. It's coming up again, the fourth Sunday. And we want, uh, the participation has been good, and we thank you. And so we want you to prepare your mind, prepare your heart and your mind and your money for that Big Guild Sunday. We're looking, y'all, we're going to build... We received a word of prophecy from uh, Pastor Joseph David, Davis, and he'll be here soon to Life Changers. And, uh, but, y'all, we're building on 20, um, on Bomb Road, and there are some things we don't want to take with us. Hey, how, how, thank you, Mother Kathy. How many of y'all know when you get ready to go up, there are some things you don't want to take with you? Hallelujah. When God starts increasing you, there are some things you can't take with you. Hallelujah. Dr. Ronson, they're talking about stress. There are some things you don't want to take with you. So we're praying that God will do some new things within us before we get to Bomb Road. Amen. How many of y'all just looking for God to do something new in you? Hallelujah. And you got to be careful who you hang with, too. Hallelujah. So we just thank and praise God. And thank God for our pastor, Superintendent Mandrell, under his great leadership. Now, the Witherspoon, we thank you for carrying this service this morning. Praise and worship team and all of y'all. We thank God so very much for your carrying this service. Uh, Pastor here working, making sure things are happening. Deacon Ball, um, we're bringing people to fix the organ, get the drums like we wanted and all of that. So we, we put a lot in here. But it's because of your finances that we're able to do what we need to do. It's because you give and we say thank you. The tithers, we're going to say thank you. Those who give offering, we want to say thank you. You help us make this ministry work financially, and we say thank you. We have nothing cheap in this church because we're not going to, as Superintendent Allen, we're not going to make our house great and not make the Lord house great. Amen. We're going to do the Lord house better than we do our house. And so every dime we get, we thank y'all for it. And I'm going to ask y'all today, if you would, to give $50 in offering. If you would, to our, our young people, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your participating. Joy, joy people still talking about the black Jesus from Life Changers. They still talking about that black Jesus from Life Changers. We had a real black Jesus. Amen. I black Jesus sure enough came from Egypt. <laughs> Amen. So, And we want to thank you for putting your all. I mean, people everywhere are talking about you. And so we thank you so very much. So we're going to ask if you would to please give. You can stand and give. Everybody's standing. We're going to ask you to give $50. Amen. We want to say to those who are watching, thank you too for giving. We have so many people on Facebook and uh, YouTube who give. And we want to say thank you. It is because of your giving, because of your tithe as well, that we're able to do what we do in ministry. And we thank you so, so very, very much. And those who are on our sick list, uh, Elder Booker, uh, Sister Stephanie Johnson, Sister Tricia, and the whole family, we want to keep everybody in our prayers. Amen. COVID is still going around, but so is the flu. You got the flu going around, so be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Everybody standing. Amen. Amen. Sister Keisha can. Sister Tisha can. Uh, testify, then the devil thought meant it for evil. Y'all better hear me. God will turn it around for you good. You don't have to fight nothing. Let God fight it. Amen. Let God. God can fight so much better than you. I'm, and when God does it, Ella Hagen, that's a that's a win-win. You ain't got to even open your mouth. Just tell him about it. Hallelujah. And watch God fight it. Watch God. <laughs> watch God fight it. Amen. Come on, lift your, lift your offering. And sister... Lord, we pray that your grandmother is doing so much better. We're praying for her. I want you to know that. She'll be forever on our prayer list. Um, and we would keep her in a prayer. Then y'all too, as you travel and, and take care of her, we're just keeping everybody in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Lift your offering. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for blessing us financially. You have blessed this church. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. 
Help us to be good stewards over what you've given to us. Help us to manage it well. Help us to put it back into the community. Put it back into the members of this church. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And I pray a total increase, a thousandfold increase, God, in our finances. We heard the man of God say promotion. It's all, we have already got it. Healing, we already got it. And so, God, as we give today, we bless this ministry. And we ask you to bless it in the name of Jesus. Amen. for your giving. Thank you. Thank you. See your mother trolling. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for your giving. Uh, and I uh, want to say too, Yesterday, Evangelist McBride did a presentation for the Zetas, and she did an absolutely fantastic, fantastic job. Amen. And we want to just thank God for putting us even further in the community. Amen. And uh, Dr. Therese down in Fort Pierce, I mean, teaching a Sunday school lesson, and we are thankful unto God for, for everything that he's done. Uh, and Monday, she's going to close out our conference, the uh, Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. She's going to close that out. Uh, Evangelist Matt Bride is going to close out our conference on um, uh, Monday. And I just thank God for what he's doing. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. And we're asking God. We're asking God for that. Dr. Rawson, thank you. Thank you for coming into this church, helping us to look at our health. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for what you, I mean, I'm sorry, Mother Roston. Thank you for what you, thank you for what you provided. And Elder Witherspoon, Sister Kalia, Evangelist um, uh, Serena, thank you all for leading this ministry. Amen. We thank you. are doing an excellent job. And it's all because we have a leader. We have a leader in this church, our senior pastor, who want us to excel in everything we do. And I thank God for a man who's concerned about our health. He's concerned about our wealth. He's concerned about our spirituality. A man who teaches integrity and living. A great role model for us all. I thank God so very, so very much for that. I've had three men to come to me and ask if they can sit and talk to my husband because they want to be better men. And they, they're not even saved, but they say they watch the broadcast. And pastor, they want to sit with you and so they could be better men, better husbands. And I thank God, I thank God for that. I thank God for that because men need good men leaders. Men need good men leaders. And I thank God for us having, and as far as I'm concerned, the best leader for us ever. And that is Superintendent Gerald Mandrell. Thank God. <laughs> Amen. And he follows me everywhere. He was out in the hot sun yesterday with me at uh, the Cool Breeze uh, Jazz Award. And, uh, and I want to thank all of you who came. Thank y'all so, so, so very much. And then a whole lot. But Pastor was right there, sitting, watching, and looking. And uh, he's just always there. And if you call him, he's coming. If you call him, he's coming. And sometimes they say, well, if you don't open your Bible, say you have not because you ask not, right? And so you have to let them know sometime, not sometime, all the time, that you need us. And we'll be there. Can't nobody say they call and we have not been there. No one. Hallelujah. Now, we may not, you know, we're looking at something. We won't be showing up all the time. Uh, for some, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Amen. We'll talk about that later. But um, that's that stress point, Dr. Roster. We got to watch our stress level. I mean, but I just think, I just think, look at my armor bear. That, yes. But I thank God for pastor because he loves what he does. 
Pastor Joe Davis told us, and Overseer Greg James, and Apostle Lycan, and Pastor Clarence Jackson, 30 years is a long time to pastor a church. You have so many fickle people who come, and some of y'all won't know because you won't ever pastor. And you won't ever stand behind this desk as a pastor. But it's something leading people who sometime up, sometime down, who agree and who disagree, who try to hold their ties, Elder Allen. But one thing God told us, don't ever put your trust in man. He said, love man and trust me. My God, he said, love the people, but trust me. And pastor have said, when sometimes when things look kind of whatever, Elder was fooling, and pastor and I are talking, and he always say, well, sweetheart, God told me to start this ministry. And God is not going to let his work fail. And I thank God for a man of God who will stand on the principles of God. Man, I hear him praying for y'all. Hear him praying for y'all. Praying for this church. Praying for the members. Calling the names out. Everybody's name. From the children to the, to the oldest. Uh, and we want to thank. I thank God for that. Amen. I thank God that he preach what he, he lives what he preach at home. Amen. He's not an abuser. Hallelujah. He's not an abuser. He's, he's not a womanizer. He's not a menizer. Amen. He, he don't bother little children. Hallelujah. Y'all, that's important. Amen. He don't bother little boys. Somebody asked me, Evangelist Matt Bryan, do I trust him to be with the women? I trust him to be with Beyonce. Amen. Because I got the ring. Yeah, he put a ring on it. <laughs> and that's the right one. Yeah. And so I do. And the reason why I trust him is because he loved God so much. Do y'all understand me? He loves God. And I love to brag about the God in him. I do. And I do this introduction same way even in the national church. Simply because I'm super proud of the man of God that he is. And I'm honored, Deacon C. Brooks, to have a man of God like that leading us and leading my home hallelujah after the choir the praise and team praise and worship team has ministered we're gonna stand and let's honor the god in him i am uh the first member of life changes church of god in christ i am but i also have the privilege and honor not just to be the first lady the only lady of jerry mandrell so after the choir has the praise team has ministered we're going to ask y'all to stand. Bless the name of Jesus. We thank God for our co-pastor, one and only, Dr. Judy Mandrell. We're praying and asking God to really give us even more on today. The atmosphere is set. We've said and declared so many things. If you would lift your hands and just tell the Lord something you're looking for in your word today. The power of our declaration, the word says we will decree and declare things and he will establish it. And there's some personal things we need as well as collaboratively that we're looking for in the world today. We want God to know what we're looking for, to proclaim and acknowledge it, and really put our faith on it. So as we receive the word today, we receive all that he has for us. As we begin the service saying, God is our everything, we believe the word because he is the word is going to be everything we need as he's hearing our desires and what we need through the word. And so as we prepare for the word, we're speaking decreeing and declaring and believing that it shall come forth in Jesus' name. I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. Come on, lift your hands and say, I shall have, yeah, with confidence, what I decree, ready to receive, yes, I believe, it belongs to me, so I'm going to speak into the atmosphere. Oh, so I'm going to 
for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you for your love and your favor that you show towards us. God, I thank you for the power of your love. I just thank you, even God, for being merciful to us. For you have allowed us to see another day. You have allowed us to even yet to experience your presence again. And because of that, we give you praise and we give you glory. God, I just thank you for all that you have done and that you're doing for us. And I thank you for loving us so much, God. 
that you give us another chance over and over and over again uh, so that we can serve you and that we can worship you in the spirit of holiness and in the spirit of truth. So God, I just bless your holy name. I just thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us to come before your presence with singing, to come before your presence with thanksgiving, and to come before your presence and to worship you and to honor you. Uh, we are so grateful for that, and we're so grateful, God, that you breathe into our lungs, God, yes, even yet the breath of life, and you have touched and healed our bodies and delivered our souls even from the hands of destruction. And, and we just thank you today. I thank you, and I bless your holy name. God, I thank you for this opportunity to come in to hear your word in the name of Jesus. So, God, I pray that you would give us a word, God, that will speak to every condition, every situation that will bring healing, that will bring deliverance, that will bring restoration, that will bring peace, that will bring power, that will bring your love, that will bring a manifestation of your grace. And we just thank you today. Uh, for in you we live when we move and we have our being. And so we exist only because of you. So God, we ask that you will have your way in us. Come on, have your way in me. In the name of Jesus. Yes, I bind every sickness. I come against mental illness. I come against depression. I come against every disease and everything that hinders and that affects the people of God. And God, I pray that even as we trust you, that you will give us deliverance, that you will give us healing, that you will even yet open doors and make ways available for us. And we know that only you can do it. Come on, only you can do it. Only you can do it. It is by your grace, and we believe it, and we receive it with the thanks and with the praise. It's in Jesus' name. Come on now, put your hands together and open your mouth and just tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Yes, he's already done the work for you. Just give him glory for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are so grateful to God just for his goodness, amen, and for his mercy uh, that he shows towards us. We are so thankful even yet for giving us life and uh, that more abundantly, amen. And I'm so thankful that God has uh, given us his word. Amen, for we find so much life and so much vitality in the word of God, and we're so grateful to God, even yet for it. And I just thank God, thank God for our praise and worship team leading us, even before the throne of grace. Amen, amen. The Bible says, come before him with singing. Amen, so they lead us to the throne of God. So before we make any requests, we have to praise him. Amen. And we have to worship him and we have to honor him. Amen. That gets his attention. Amen. And once you get his attention, then you can make your petition. Amen. So again, we just thank God so much for them and for the musicians. Amen. Uh, carrying us into his presence for our media staff and for everyone, all those who uh, serve and uh, to help us to uh, do the will of God. Uh, we praise God so much for you. Amen. You make worship possible and make it uh, uh, even uh, easier uh, to do. So again, we just thank God. Thank God for everyone in their respective places. Amen. And I praise God for my beautiful wife. Amen. Dr. Judah Mandrell. Amen. 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 We were blessed again yesterday. She was honored. Uh, amen. By the Cool, cool Breeze Festival. Amen, and uh, it was it was a wonderful, a wonderful experience. Amen. So you know, I can proudly stand up and uh, just proclaim, "That's my wife." Amen. Amen. That's that's my wife. Amen. And I'm I'm so thankful for her accomplishments and uh, just the success uh, that God has given to her. Amen. So and she is a definitely a blessing to me. Uh, I couldn't be who I am or able to do what uh, I do uh, if it was not for her. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm so truly blessed, and I'm thankful 
uh, to God for that. Amen. We're going to go into the word of God, and I trust not to be before you long. Amen. But uh, I have to give you what thus says the Lord. And, amen. And I believe today uh, God is, uh, uh, want, to, want me to encourage you. Let you know that your victory is just right around the corner. <laughs> amen, amen. It's right around the corner, which means that it's almost here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Look at somebody and say, it's almost here. Whatever you've been waiting on or whatever you've been praying about, I just want to let you know today that it is almost here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all pray for me that I uh, uh, can effectively uh, minister this uh, to you. Amen. Again, uh, we're so grateful and thank God for you, Dr. Ralston. Amen. And for your team for helping us to uh, uh, restart our health ministry. Amen. I will be, uh, I will be really less than what God has determined for me to be. Uh, for me to practice in the health profession yes, and not to be concerned about your health. Right. Amen. Amen. So uh, he gives us not just to minister to you spiritually, but also to minister to your physical man. Yes, Amen. Because if you are sick and uh, diseased and all this other stuff, I can't really expect too much out of you spiritually. Right. Amen. Because you won't be able to perform it. So what? The Bible teaches us that he, he, he said he prayed that we would be in health, amen, that we would have good health even as our soul prospers. So, therefore, it is necessary that you take care of your body. Amen. Uh, turn to the book of Zechariah. It's in the Old Testament. Y'all may have to look for it. Amen. Book of Zechariah. The fourth chapter, a very familiar passage of scripture that the Lord just brought to my heart and began to uh, speak to my heart uh, for you today. Amen. Amen. As I promise, I won't, I won't be long. Amen. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, and beginning at verse one, and it reads, and the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Know thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying grace grace unto it. Amen. From the gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you 
and shall be in you. Amen. I praise God for the reading of his holy word. I want to talk for the next few moments from this subject by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Look at someone and say that. By the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not by power. Nor by might. But I'm here to declare today that your victory is coming by the Holy Ghost. Amen. You is coming by the Holy Ghost. Uh, as a spirit-filled believer, we're given the power and advantage actually over every obstacle and every hindrance that we may encounter or that may come our way. Matter of fact, God has given us the tools and the tactics that we have at our disposal to deal with every issue that we face in life. He did not leave us unprepared or unequipped. Amen. To, in order to deal with these tests and trials and tribulations or other obstacles that we have to deal with in life. Amen. He has adequately equipped us uh, to be able to handle every challenge. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He has given us his faith. He has given us his, his word. He has given us prayer. He has given us so many different things that are at our disposal to help us to be successful. One of our greatest advantages is the power of faith and prayer, uh, which we don't really always use effectively. Yes, prayer and faith are powerful, uh, what I consider to be a powerful double barrel weapon that we can use to overcome every challenge that we face. If we just learn how to pray enough, thank you, Lord, just pray enough, you hear me? Not just praying occasionally, but praying often. Yes, pray before you get in trouble. Pray after you get in trouble. Pray while you're in trouble. If you learn how to do that, prayer really would help you to fight your battles. Matter of fact, prayer will help you to avoid a whole lot of issues. Because it's in prayer that we communicate with God and God himself communicate with us. In addition to that, uh, he has given us the name and the blood of Jesus that we can evoke in every situation. Matter of fact, using his name and having faith in his name has won many battles for many of saints. Yes, Thank God. Many miracles have even happened because saints are using the precious name of Jesus. And if it worked before, guess what? It'll work again. Yes, Thank God. Look at somebody say, if God did it before, it it's an indication that he'll do it again. Uh, he don't like the ability, he just like the opportunity that you have to give him opportunity to do it for you. Sometimes we just don't have enough faith. We just don't trust them. And many things, even as the psalm says, that we don't carry to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord. So the only failure that we experience is the failures that we cause. It's not a failure on God's part. But if you just trust in him, if you just believe in him, God is willing to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or yet think. You just have to give him the opportunity to work on your behalf. Sometimes you just have to step back and let God do it. Oh, God, help us, Holy Ghost. Look at somebody say, you got to let God work for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm almost finished, thank you. You just got to let God work for you. Thank you. As a matter of fact, Jesus stated that he would not leave us comfortless. You hear me? He says he would not leave us what? Comfortless. While Jesus was here, he was their comforter. If they had a need, he met their need. Oh, when they were hungry, he multiplied the food. Oh, when they needed money, he said, go look at the fish. You'll find money in their mouth. Oh, he made every need possible. Even with sickness, he healed them. He was their comforter. He was their helper. So when he left, he said, guess what? I'm not going to leave you helpless. I'm going to give you what? Another comforter. I thank God for caring for us so much that he would not leave us comfortless. He said, I'm going to send you another comforter, which is what? The Holy Ghost, and I love this. It says he will abide with you how long? 
Uh, come on, he will buy with you what? Always, forever, thank you, Lord Jesus. God will not forsake you. He will not give up on you. He will not uh, turn his back on you. But he'll be with you always, even to the end of time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he does it by the way of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, it's no less than the power of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's no less than the power of the Father. Because the Holy Ghost is in, really, he's the third part of the Godhead. So to have the Holy Ghost is the same as having Jesus. It's the same as having the Father. So you're not lacking on anything. Matter of fact, the Holy Ghost has the very power and the essence of God within himself. So I want to let you know, you don't understand this, that when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you are really filled with God. And if God be for you, nothing can be against you. If you have God on your side, who's going to work against you? Oh, God, come on, another comforter. What we have to do, we have to learn how to use the Holy Ghost that is in us for what only he can do. Let him do what he can do. You do what you can do by having faith in him. And let him work the work for you. Thank God. Look at somebody and say, let him work for you. So today I want to provoke you to stir the gift of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. And allow him to give you glory and to give you victory in every challenge that you face. you got to allow the Holy Ghost to stand up on the inside of you. So I want to challenge you. I want you to decree out loud, I am healed by the Holy Ghost. Come on, I am delivered by the Holy Ghost. I am free by the Holy Ghost. Come on and say this, I have victory by the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. It is the Holy Ghost that's doing the work. Many times we have to learn uh, to become sensitive to his operating in our day-to-day -day lives. As Jesus stated in John 16 and 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. It's through the revelation of the Holy Ghost that becomes our daily successes. Oh, God, yes, he is a good talker. Oh, I'm going to ask you, are you a good listener? Oh, God, he's not going to be silent in your life. He'll tell you which way to go. But you can only go there if you listen to what he's telling you. Oh, God, help us all the goals. He knows what's ahead of us. And he will guide and protect us from all harm. So I want to challenge you to stop uh, practicing to ignore him, but listen to him. Learn how to listen to his, to him, to his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. Do you hear him because you become familiar with him? Oh, the devil cannot imitate God. Thank you, Lord. If you really know God, oh, God, help us, Holy Ghost. Just think about it. Uh, you could go and tell somebody what Pastor Mandrell said, this, that, and uh, the other. But because you know me, you know whether or not that's something that I will say. Uh, in the same sense, if you have that relationship with God, you'll know his word. You'll know his voice. Thank you, Lord. And you got to learn how to hear him in order to obey him. And when you obey him, you'll have good success. Oh, God, help us all to go. Let me help you out. Thank you. In our, today's lesson, Zechariah was given a vision of the Spirit of God in the form of a golden lampstand with seven pipes having seven lamps and a bowl on top of it and having two olive trees, one on each side of the lamp, one on the right and one on the left. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to understand this. Uh, in, in this vision, and the Lord let Zechariah know, he said, this is what I want you to communicate to Zerubbabel. Thank you, Lord. Zerubbabel. And there's something about Zerubbabel that many of us don't appreciate. 
He was one of the last kings in Israel that after they came out of captivity with Babylon, that led them out of captivity back to the restoration of the temple, to rebuild the temple of God, to reestablish the temple of God. Zerubbabel, his name actually means to be born in Babel. In other words, he was born in Babylon, which was a strange land. It doesn't matter where you're born. It matters where you're going to. Oh, God, if you look at somebody say it matters where you're going. Let them call you what they want to call you. That don't determine your future. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, it's God that will determine your future. But look at this. He saw an illustration of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He woke up. Zechariah woke up, and he had that vision. And the vision was it was a, a what? A candelabra or, or, or a lampstand. And the thing about it, it had what? Seven lamps or it had seven lights. They're symbolic. The number seven means complete. They're symbolic of the seven and perfect revelation of the Holy Ghost. Simply because there's light, that means that it shows, it brine, it, it's bright, it's illuminated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God does not deal with darkness, even though in darkness he can see as though it was light. But he comes to give you revelation. So now you have the seven lamps burning, which you have now total illumination. Thank you, Lord. Look at somebody and say complete illumination. You got the seven lamps uh, that, let's just say, is symbolic and complete and perfect revelation of the Holy Ghost. But then you had seven pipes, which are the holders of the lamps. Seven pipes implies that the Holy Spirit is the sole source of the lamps. Uh, thank you. So they're not getting, the lights are not coming from any other source, but it's coming from that one lamp. Thank you. So what? You got seven pipes, you got seven lamps, and you have what? Seven pipes. Then you had one bowl. The bowl is the reservoir of the oil that provides continual fuel through the pipes so that the lamps were burned. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That, that, that you have to understand. The lamps now are seated uh, in, in a place so that they are fueled by the oil that's coming from out of that one bowl which let us know that God is one God. He's eternal existence in what? Three persons, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So what? The oil is only coming through one source so that the Holy Ghost is illuminating the very essence of God. Thank God. So what? You got that one bowl. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But look at this. He said, but on the left side and on the right side, you had a tree. You had two olive trees. Oh, God, help us hold the ghost. And I love this. In the fact that they were two trees, which means that they were alive. But that means that they were a continual source of the provision of the oil. So they, were, it, they never give out of oil. God, help mercy. Look at somebody say, it's perpetual. Which God is from everlasting to everlasting. But he said that they had two. Two is the number of witness. But they had one on the left side and what? One on the right side. To me, that indicates one is the Old Testament. The other one is the New Testament. You got to have the whole book to represent God. Not just the New Testament or just the Old Testament, but you need fuel from both of them. As a matter of fact, as you read, you find that, that it talks about that the source of this is the anointing. You're anointed from the Old Testament. You're anointed from the New Testament. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say, you got to have the whole book. The Holy Ghost one just in the New Testament. But here it shows that he's in the Old Testament. And Zechariah was told that it's not by power. It's not by might. But your answer is coming by the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say, that's where your answer is coming from. So I'm, 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 I'm about to finish. I'm here to let you know that God was given to Zechariah the solution to success. Oh, God, I'm giving you the solution to success 
for Israel reformation and God's fulfillment of redemption. I'm here to let you know it ain't going to be by any trickery. Oh, God, you may have good strategy, but your answer is not coming by strategy. You may have a good plan. You may have written your vision out, but it ain't coming by none of that. The Holy Ghost is going to do the work. Thank God. It's not coming by might. If it was coming by might, God would have shown Zechariah a different vision. Uh, he would have shown him a vision of weaponry. He would have shown him a vision of a soldier or even a vision of some other catastrophic event. But instead, he simply just showed him the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, he gave him a visual uh, description of the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody say, you got to see him for who he is. Oh, yes, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He is the great I am, which means whatever you need, he is. Whatever you need, he will become. Whatever you need, he'll work it out for you. He is God. Oh, God, have mercy. So as I bring this scroll code, oh, I want to ask you a question. Who can stand before you? Oh, when you call on the name of Jesus, who can stand before you when the Holy Ghost is there working for you? Oh, the Bible says he will go before you and he will be your reward. He'll go before you and he'll watch your back. He'll open doors for you that you cannot open. He'll make a way for you when you cannot make it. He'll make the rough places smooth. He'll make the high places level. He'll make the low places come up because the Holy Ghost is going to do it for you. Uh, so I want to let you know, thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, God told us, even as Paul says in 2 Corinthians, uh, the 10th chapter, Begin at verse 6, he says, so though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to reveal all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now listen to this. We don't fight where we walk. We don't fight where we walk. Look at somebody say, you don't fight where we walk. We walk in the flesh, but we don't fight in the flesh. Oh, God, have mercy. In other words, don't be a person of contention. Don't be a person of anger and of strife because you're not fighting against what you're having to deal with. It's a spiritual battle. It's one that is not seen physically. So you don't fight with what you see. You got to learn how to fight behind the scenes. You got to fight with what you cannot see. And it takes the Holy Ghost to intervene for you. Oh, Paul said that we don't fight where we where we walk. We fight the good fight of faith. Oh, God, look at somebody say the good fight of faith. He told Timothy, 1 Timothy 6 and 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. We are fighting with what we're holding on to. You hear me? We're fighting with what we're holding on to which is eternal life. I cannot forsake my eternal life oh, and be condemned to hell because I fight against you wrong. We are fighting with the help of the Holy Ghost. God help us, Holy Ghost. I want you to see this. He is going to go before you and he's going to make your way out. Thank you, Lord. I want you all to understand this. The Lord told me to tell you a coming, um, it's coming by me. Let me fight for you. Let me fight your battles. Let me be your battle axe. Uh, God promised that he'll build a strong tower that the righteous shall run in and be safe. 
that he said that he'll be a battle axe in the time of battle. He said he would be our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. He is the Holy Ghost. He will work it out for you. He will open doors for you. He will make a way for you. He will answer your prayer. He will do it for you. Come on, look at somebody and say, he'll do it for you. Oh, God. I, I, I hear that say, you don't have to fight this one. Thank you, Lord. Look at three people say, you don't have to fight in this one. You don't have to fight in this one. The battle ain't yours. The devil wants you to think it's yours, but it ain't yours. The battle belongs to God. Who can stand before us when we call on that name? All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost will respond. Just call on the name of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost will make a way for you. Just call on the name of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost will intervene. Nothing can stand before you. Nothing can stop you. Because the Holy Ghost is going to fight it. Hallelujah. He told me to tell you. Thank you, Lord. You can make your plans. You can make your strategy. But it ain't coming by your power. It's not coming by your might. But it's coming by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Look at somebody say, it's coming by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I hear when they come to you and say we changed our minds. All I want you to do is remember that that was the Holy Ghost. When they say there's another strategy to open up, that was the Holy Ghost. When all of a sudden that loan was approved. That was the Holy Ghost. When that money just show up out of nowhere, that was the Holy Ghost. When all of a sudden that doctor reports change, that diagnosis change, that was the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. You look at somebody and say, that was the Holy Ghost. I believe in giving credit where credit is due. And when God do it for you, uh, I want you just to declare that was the Holy Ghost. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God, I, I, I love this. Because when, when, when Zerubbabel was sent and commissioned to go ahead on and Build the temple. Do what you got to do. That wasn't nobody but the Holy Ghost. Because they didn't have to fight any battles. They didn't have to pay anybody. They didn't have to bribe anybody. It was totally God. And he was able to uh, restore the temple. To rebuild the temple. He, it was the second building of the temple of God that was destroyed when Babylon had invaded it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So his act was one of the final acts of the Old Testament. But it didn't come by anything but by the work of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, where y'all stand? The Lord told me to let you know that your success is going to come by him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He told me don't worry about anything. He says I'm working it out. God has a strategy that you won't understand. 
Thank you, Lord. Let me say that again. He has a strategy that you do not understand, nor can you comprehend, but he is working it out for you. Y'all hear me? He is working it out for you. He's not just working in the background. He's working in the foreground. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He is, he is already, he has already done it. Can, can y'all hear this? He has already done it. If he has given you the vision for it. Let me say this. I want you to hear this clearly. If he has given you the vision for it, it means it's already completed. I, I want you to hear this. If he has given you the vision for it, it's already what? Completed. He's now just have to get you through time to get you to what he has already completed. Y'all got me? So sometimes you may not understand how you're going to get there. <laughs> Let, let, let me say this. Driving from Quincy into Tallahassee, you can see the Capitol building while you're driving on 90 in the distance. But you don't know how many turns you got to go through before you get to what you see. We just see it and want to get it. But you got to understand, you got to follow it. If you don't really know how, you know you follow your GPS. You follow that which you don't see that can give you directions how to get to what it is that you saw. So the Holy Ghost say, let me be your guide. Let me, what, show you how to get to it. Because I'm going to give you the total victory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at somebody say, it is mine. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I feel the Holy Ghost is already working. Thank you. Now you can understand why you're having to go through what you're having to go through. Because the enemy wants you to give up. But don't give up. Continue to have faith in God. Because he's working it out for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He will make your pathway straight. Thank you, Jesus. If you just have faith in him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you just trust him. If you just obey him, thank you, Lord. I want you to understand this, and that's, this is my strength. Let me say this. This is my strength. It is uh, my comfort. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We, as we said, 30 years. Thank you, Lord. And there's so much that God has shown me. And I could easily worry, well, why haven't I been able to finish all this? And the Lord says, not by your power. It's not by your might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And then Pastor Jackson said something uh, Tuesday night that, uh, that blessed me. He said how God will put you in an old place, but then he'll do a new thing. And the Lord said, before you do your new thing, I got to put you in an old place and let you perfect what you're doing in the old place before you get to your new place. I said, now I understand. <laughs> because I've been trying to figure out why God, why you brought me to this before you carried me to that. He said, I got to put you in an old place first before I do a new thing in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So in the same sense, I want you to understand God has a plan. He don't give you everything. He just show you the vision of the future so that you would have something that you're aiming for. Thank you, Lord. But he's going to work in between. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at somebody and say, you need God in, in your between time. Thank you, a lot of times we fail to realize that, that he's working in your between times. Between the time that he showed you and where you are now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, Father, we thank you. 
uh, for being the intermediary for us. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that come to lead us and guide us into all truth and all righteousness. So God, I thank you because you are very present help, even in time of trouble. But when we didn't know how to make it, or we didn't know how to pray, or we didn't know what to do, God, it was you that was working in the background. You were making ways for us, and you were opening doors for us. God, you were in the boardroom with the others, God, that you were working our plan, even without our knowledge. And I just thank you. I thank you for being a God that love us so much and care for us so much that you would not allow us to struggle, but you will work it miraculously for our good. For we know that all things work together for good to them who are called according to your purpose. And I thank you for the Holy Ghost, for even the illustration that you gave to Zechariah of the Holy Ghost being the intermediary and being the worker of the plan. For it's not by our power, neither is it by our might, but it's by your Holy Spirit that we shall have good success. So even as you sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and, and die for us to be redeemed, you sent the Holy Spirit to help us to live out of what Jesus had provided for us. He came to teach us and to guide us and to lead us and to direct us. He came to open doors for us and to work miracles for us. He came, God, even yet to, to help us even to times of trouble and to give us good success. So, God, we honor your Holy Spirit that dwells within the midst of us and that is filling our inner man. So we thank you today. I thank you for giving us good success and giving us the ability to be able to lean and to trust in you. We believe that you are able uh, to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or yet think according to the power that worketh in us. And it's the Holy Ghost, which is that power that working on the inside of us. And I thank you today. I thank you for your righteousness. And I thank you for your truth. For the Holy Ghost did not just come to make me shout or to make me dance. He did not just come for me to speak in an unknown tongue. But he came so I can live an effective life and to be able to glorify you on earth. I thank you for the revelation of him. I thank you for the wisdom of him. I thank you for the power of him. I thank you for the anointing of him because even Jesus did not do any ministry until after he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, even, even uh, Adam, you said that he was successful when you gave him another helper. Yeah, thank you, Lord Jesus. So in the same sense, you told us to wait until we are endowed with power uh, that we receive the helper of the Holy Ghost. So God, we know because he has uh, dwelt within us that we are able to do great things. We're able to do great wonders. And it's because of the power that work upon the inside of us. And I thank you for the power. Come on, I thank you for the anointing. And I thank you for your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise and we give you glory for it. So God, I ask that you will fill us again. Come on, say, fill me again. Fill me with your presence. Come on, fill me with your anointing. Fill me with your power. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray that we will always be aware of you dwelling on the inside of us. And that you will do the work for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For it's not by power, nor by might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. It's in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hand together and give God praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's it. Come on, lift up voices and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I, I, I just feel this in my spirit. God is going to show himself to you. Even while you're sitting there trying to contemplate one thing or another, he's just going to work it out. 
The Holy Ghost is just going to work it out. That he's going to baffle you. And he's going to baffle with whoever it is you're dealing with. Uh, they're going to try to figure out what happened. What go, what's going on? And I just hear in your mind, you just got, got to say, that's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, that's the Holy Ghost. Yes. I, I hear him. I hear him. And I just see him working it. Just changing. They can write one thing. But when they look at the paper again, it's going to be as though they wrote something else. Because he's the one that's going to work it out for you. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, so y'all yeah, 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 don't believe me. But that's what the faith, faith of the Lord is going to do. He's going to do the miraculous. He says, I'm going to work this. Amen. And I'm going to work it for your favor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. So just get ready for it to happen. Amen. Miracles happen. Amen. Miracles, not always miracles are healing. Y'all hear me? He do financial miracles. He, he does relationship miracles. He does all sorts of miracles. So get ready for it to happen. And when it does, just give him glory. And then give him praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, we thank God so much for uh, each of you being here. And we just praise God. Amen. We're going to uh, benedict you from out of this service as we go into our next service, our next presentation. Again, we're so grateful. Thank God for uh, our health ministry team. Amen. Amen. They're doing a tremendous job. And we appreciate them, amen, uh, for that. Uh, as I said, uh, there's a whole lot of health issues uh, that are in the world today, amen. And, uh, of course, I'm there to help them, amen, even in their uh, work. So y'all honor them, amen. The challenges that we uh, give and that they provide, uh, it's only there to help you to live a more healthy in a more productive life. Amen. So again, I thank God. Uh, I, I praise God even yet for uh, for them and uh, trust them uh, even in what they're doing and I support them. Amen. Uh, in their efforts. So I pray God's blessing. So y'all please don't leave. Let's stay and uh, hear this part uh, as we go on uh, even further. So with that, Father, we give you praise, and we just thank you. I thank you for the health ministry team, amen, the, 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 the uh, ministry of Dr. Ralston and, and her team uh, that has helped us to reinvigorate uh, our health ministry in the name of Jesus. So God, we're not just concerned about the spiritual man, but we're also concerned about the physical man as well as the mental man of every person that we encounter. So, God, I pray that even as we leave from out of this service into the next service, that you will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, we ask that you would do the work, that you will fill us with wisdom to help us to overcome every disease, every condition, every situation that we have to encounter. And we just thank you today. I thank you for your mercy. And I thank you for the power of your grace. And it's in the name of Jesus that we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.